PNC is proud to support Business Forward, where local leaders discuss the challenges and opportunities and how we do business in Central Illinois. Welcome to Business Forward. I'm your host, Matt George. Joining me tonight, Jonathan Romain. He's got so many titles at Art Inc. I don't even know what they are anymore, but he's the Associate Artistic Director for Art Inc. And Lori Weaver, President of Impact Central Illinois. Thank you for coming on, both of you. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Well, this is the second show of three that we're talking about impact giving, and I know there's other terms for it, but you know, Laura, you've been on before and, and we talk about um, how an idea came to fruition, which then came to hundreds of women collectively coming together to make change in central Illinois like I've never seen before. So let's start with you and just talk about impact. And I know, you, I, I guessed that you're around 300 people now just by the grants itself, is that Yeah, 315 accurate? this past giving year. That so we just gave crazy. grants away in hmm. June and yeah. So the model is that it's just women mm -hmm. and the model is that they donate an amount and it's relatively small, so to speak. I mean, it's, it's, it's still, it's what a hundred a month average or ninety well, a month it, or it's eleven hundred dollars. A thousand goes directly towards the grants, and then a hundred goes towards Admin administrative and, and all yeah. that. So three hundred and fifteen people, and mm -hmm. I remember over five years ago, you no, we're going into our fifth giving cycle, so it's only four crazy? years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I remember you going and, and correct me if I'm wrong. You went to Texas. Yeah, we did and you <clears throat> Austin. saw Austin, Texas, and you saw a model, and you were blown away. <clears throat> yeah. And you came back, and somehow you implemented it, which is just crazy. Yeah, I'm that's so proud exciting. of you. I mean, that is just unbelievable. It's funny, because I was talking to your husband, Chuck Weaver, and he's, uh, he said, now it's fun, because now I go out, and everybody wants to talk to Lori. <laughs> All the women, anyway. <laughs> All the right. women, anyway. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, that is just great. But it's been, a, you know, it's a roller coaster, too. And, and you know, when you talk about process and the thing that I love about what you do the most is the vetting process, because the vetting process is really that buy in from all women. Right. Oh, it's, when, it's where we learn the most. It's where you sit, you know, sit around a table with 20 other women and you push up your sleeves and you try to understand what not for profits are trying to accomplish in your community and you compare them with who else is doing it and how much will this cost and can they really pull it off? That's where you learn. And, and it is, the, am I right in saying this? Because the collective giving model, that's mm -hmm. the right term. Yeah. I said yep. it earlier and it didn't sound right, but I think, yeah. okay, the collective yeah. giving model. Yeah, women coming together and pooling their money. I don't write a lot of checks to not-for-profits for over $100,000. Isn't that neat? But I can yeah. with 314 other women. That is great. So. I'm experienced in the process because Children's Home was a recipient, mm -hmm. uh, where we were the first recipient. <laughs> and I think at the time, you might have had about close to 100 women, or maybe Yeah, we had less. 130, because yes. you were our sole yes. uh, recipient. Mm -hmm. And, and yeah. it was just an honor. And, and going through the process, you know, the, the CEO or the director, whoever it is, they have to really be part of the whole process going through. And, and that leadership piece is, is very important. And when you sit there and you look at the scope of all these nonprofits, isn't it pretty cool to see all of the ideas that people have? It's, it's, it's entrepreneurship mm -hmm. within social service. Yeah, and it's humbling because oh, good word. because these are the people you know we hopefully are empowering them but they're the ones you know Jonathan Nikki they're the ones you are in the trenches yeah. and so it's it's very mm -hmm. humbling to um, to to learn about the work that's being done in the trenches and in last week's show I was talking to Jamie True Love and, and and also Andy Thornton and mm -hmm. one of the things that you know we were talking about too is if you 
do not receive the grant. Use it as a learning experience mm -hmm. and hone in on tightening it up. Yeah, and Andy can mm -hmm. speak to that. He, that's right? what we talked about. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you sit there and you, you have now 300 plus women that mm -hmm. are sitting here, all smart, all business leaders, mm -hmm. uh, and they're looking at it's it's free advice. Oh yeah, yeah, and <laughs> and marketing. I and mean, marketing. I think mm -hmm. um, Jonathan John Rokey, who I think you're going <clears> to <throat> speak with um, down the road, week, and Jonathan yeah. have both expressed to us that getting on the stage and getting in front of 315 women, you know, John would say that's the gift. The, the grant money is the icing on the cake. Right. But having 315 women read and understand what you're trying to accomplish. I, I think that, that was probably the most fun piece of it for me too, mm -hmm. is to look out in the crowd. I remember we were mm -hmm. at the Holt Center and one of the, um, after we received it and, mm -hmm. and talking and, right. and you sit there and, and you look at all of these people's eyes, mm -hmm. knowing that they had a piece mm -hmm. of what we're implementing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's hard to describe and it. And they you... feel ownership. Mm -hmm. Another you know, good they word. Feel, they feel like yeah. they gave you, gave Children's Home, $130,000. Yeah. Because it wouldn't have happened without each one of them. That's exactly right. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Jonathan, yeah. here's what's fun about this show. <clears throat> and I've, I told Lori this um, a couple months ago when I ran into her. I said, a lot of people have a lot of ideas. I don't care whether it's for profit or profit. There's a lot of entrepreneurs out there. But what Lori did and with impact and now all these women, what they're doing, mm -hmm. and what you and your wife, Nikki, have done may be the two most amazing slash, uh, I, don't, I could give you 50 words. It's so impressive that when I sat down with each of you, before it came to fruition, and where it's at now, it's mind-boggling, and I'm blown away. Mm -hmm. it's, it's impressive. Mm -hmm. So explain, before we go into the grant, why don't you tell the journey of Art, Inc. and where it's gone from year one to where you're at now? Okay. Well, <clears throat> well, let me first start by saying I think what Lori did is more miraculous than what we did. And, and the reason I say that, <clears throat> is because she started something from scratch that she had never done before. And so she was in a territory that was so unfamiliar to yeah. her. Well, it's true. And then to be able to turn it and manifest it into what it is today. It's crazy. It's nuts. <laughs> it's nuts. And where, I agree. where her path <clears throat> and, and, and my path differ is that when people come along and see what we are doing now, they just see what we're doing now. But what, what Nikki and I are doing is really an evolution of over 25 years. Right. Because I've had galleries from Peoria to Chicago, to Oak Park, Wicker Park, and every gallery got bigger and bigger and bigger. And each one of those galleries, I went in and I revamped them, renovated them with my own hands. Yep. And so what that did, over the course of 25 years, it prepared me to take on an old abandoned school building yeah. just from the perspective of being able to fix everything in that building. So if you think about the hardest thing that you will have to encounter when you buy one of these old buildings <laughs> is that it's heavy on maintenance. Right. But if you can do that and you've been doing it the vast majority of your life, it's not that complicated. Well, it's not that complicated, mm -hmm. but I'm going to push back a little on this. I right. mean, that building's a monster. So when you sit here, I remember, mm -hmm. I remember getting a tour before you even opened the doors. Right. And I'm walking through there and you're saying, we're going to do solar here. We're going green here. We're going to do this here. I go, how are you going to do it? And, you, you know, yeah, you your son and you, you, you went in there, rolled up the sleeves. I mean, I bet you you saved a million dollars just easy. off sweat equity. <laughs> easy, easy. But again, and, 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 you know, this is not hyperbole when I say this. That was the easy part. Yeah. That was really the easy For part. For some. 
the, the, well, right, right. If that were, if that's not your wheelhouse, that's not your wheelhouse. Right. But you know, I'm I'm very hands on. Yeah, I get it. I know how to mess with electricity, plumbing, age, all of that. That's simple. Let me tell you the hardest part of what we did. It's what Nikki did. Because she took on the responsibility as executive director. And it's similar to what Lori had to do because she didn't know anything yeah, about that. Yeah. And so she spent, while I was painting the building and tearing down plumbing and putting up PVC, <laughs> Nikki was behind that computer 80 hours a week. Right. And she did it for three years before she even got paid. Yeah. And she literally had to take an accelerated crash course in nonprofit executive uh, a, a class. Right. And so I didn't have to go out of my wheelhouse. I was comfortable and I'm still comfortable in everything that my role uh, encaptures in this process. She had to go 180 degrees out of her wheelhouse because she's a she's an artistic person. Right. And, and now she's an executive director. And I might add one of the best. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, the program, the program design piece, you know, program mm -hmm. management piece, mm -hmm. people think it's easy. Here's, right. a, here's 50 grand. We're going to do an after school oh program. God, it, is, it is starting a new business. Yes. And if you had, you know, at, at Children's Home, we had 54 programs. Mm -hmm. That's 54 businesses. Right. So every time you scale right. and you add a business, a program, it's a business. And now, and let me tell you this, in the difference between a for-profit and non-profit, you are scrutinized in that non-profit <laughs> right. by a million people. Right. So, and that's where the challenge with most people right. starting a non-profit comes <laughs> because they can never, and I'm not saying everyone, but the vast majority of the people who start a non-profit, they can never meet their obligations to those third party funders. Right. Because when they come in and they want to know what's happening with the money that they entrusted you with, yeah. mm -hmm. you have to have full transparency. And that comes with a heavy burden and a heavy lift. And boy, when the state audits you. Oh, don't even go there. They I don't mean, play, man. They don't. I mean, we right. in, in one year we had 22 audits. Right. So people don't understand that. Yeah. So. That's that's interesting. You uh, anyway, how many years now have you been in business? You're five going your years, and I and I just evaded the question. And I'm sorry. I will talk about how I got you what, fired up. Yeah, yeah I know how did. to get you fired up. <laughs> so so, <laughs> as as I stated, I'm an artist, um, as as you and Lori know, um, and I've been doing it since I came home from prison. Mm -hmm. And in addition to being an artist, I've had galleries. Um, but from my first gallery that I opened, it put me, it separated me from a lot of artists because it made me more visible. And then people were very familiar with my past. And so consequently, it led to a lot of people asking me to speak. And so in doing so, because I was connected to the streets, because that's where I came from. And then the perception was that I had, overcome those obstacles and I was hugely successful, even though that wasn't the truth. Right. I was struggling, uh, right. but it looked like it. But, but what I was good at was talking to the young people. I was so good, in fact, that whenever I stopped and left, there was always a yearning for more. Oh, I man. wanted to give them more. <clears throat> yep. They wanted more from me. And so from the very beginning, and this is 25 years ago, I've always felt like, man, it's heartbreaking to go talk to some kids yep. who need your help and all you get is an hour for them. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of, <laughs> of a time I was speaking at a prison in Chicago, a juvenile prison. When I walked into the room that I was speaking at their GED graduation, there was a little kid in there. <clears throat> man, this dude looked like a bag of nails. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I gave my presentation and then when it was over, a man walks up, he said, would you mind talking to my son? He would really like to talk to you. And I said, yeah, of course. So I went over to the table, and it was the guy, the little kid that I saw when I walked in that I thought was a bag of nails. I thought he was a menace. 
And he looked at me with crocodile tears coming out of his eyes and he said, man, I want to change my life. I just don't know how. And here I am. I got to leave. Mm-hmm. Right. I'll never see him again. <clears throat> right. And can you imagine yeah. being asked by a man who's drowning to help me and you have to walk away from him? Yeah. Man, that's the most heartbreaking feeling in the world. And so in the back of my mind, from that moment forward, I've always been trying to figure out how can I have a more sustained impact on the lives of some of these young people that I come into contact with. And then, you know, the building that I I have on Sheridan, it's 15,000 square feet. I told you every facility got bigger and bigger. And so I thought I could do it in that building. But... My, 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 my operation as an artist really just consumed all of it. You've seen it. Yeah. Um, and so I wasn't able to share the space with, right. with that part of what I wanted to do. But then when I, when I passed Greeley and I saw it was for sale, mm-hmm. and I had went into other schools that people had purchased, so I was already familiar with the fact that these schools cost nothing. They, they, they basically give them to you. Right. <clears throat> and I was like, okay, this might be what I'm looking for. And for six months, I sat in the parking lot. I would drive down there and just imagine what I could do, how I can do it. And then that's when I, I, I wrote up a proposal. Well, before I wrote up a proposal, I went to the boss yeah. and said, hey, would you, you think we can get a school building? And that's the wife. And uh, she was like, sure, <laughs> let's do it. Uh, and so I think because she, she came into it with open arms, it actually fulfilled a part of her desires Mm -hmm. in her life as well because this is what she wanted to do too and so that's when we uh we we moved forward on it and and it was a process it was a journey a lot of challenges but we overcame those challenges and and then we uh at from that moment when i wrote the proposal it took three years before we got the building really yeah i don't think i knew that so so now fast forward to today Mm -hmm. You know, we're sitting here talking about impact and, and what what is the scope of the program that you applied for and then received? What what are you doing? So it's a piece of a larger project that we're doing. So we're going to buy another building, another school building, and we're going to turn it into a production studio. And when I say a production studio, what I mean is imagine these old classrooms. They're giant, tall ceilings. Every classroom will be a different set like what we have here. This will be a classroom. Another classroom will be maybe a kitchen where you can do a, a cooking <clears throat> show. Right. Another classroom could be a living room slash dining room where you can do a sitcom. Another classroom will be a, 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 a newsroom. I got gotcha. you. Right? And when I tell people this, I don't want to mislead them. Don't think Michael Mann. Don't think... Uh, uh, Steven Spielberg. Don't think even Tyler Perry. What I want you to think of is the worst, crappiest movie you've ever seen on Netflix. (laughs) I can get the kids to do that. (laughs) (laughs) And now, imagine, we start teaching these kids how to build TV sets out of cardboard, which we're already doing. Right. And then eventually they graduate to ultimately building a real television set in one of the empty classrooms. And then we have them put on their own production. So we have them go get their friends who's gonna be in the production, get other friends that's gonna help them write the production, get somebody else that's gonna direct the production. And who cares what the end result is? Yeah, the outcome's irrelevant. It's irrelevant. The process, we're teaching these kids how to start with nothing and create something. And that is transferable to no matter what they do in life. And what we asked for this grant for was the money to get our lighting. And because a lot of it is digital. Yeah. And the funds that we're going to use to make this happen, it doesn't cover things that 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 don't have a life expectancy that will outlive the bond that they're using. So we have money coming from the capital bill. I gotcha. Um, so that's what we're doing. I got you. So that's a lot of a lot of kids that could funnel through there. I think what uh, a couple yeah. hundred or more. Oh well, eventually more. Well, yeah, absolutely yeah. more. Well, just with our program, you know, we see 150 kids a day. 
yeah. at our program, <clears throat> right. which we will definitely, they will be a part of this. But then also, Peoria Public School, and I'm speaking beyond, before I even talk to Dr. Karat, but I'm sure they're going to want to have their kids Why wouldn't they? participate in it. Quest, they're going to want to have their right. kids participate in it. And then what about all of these young creatives in Peoria mm -hmm. that want to do YouTube stations, that want to do TikTok mm -hmm. things, <clears throat> all of the opportunities, they're not just for Illinois. But for central, not for, I mean for Peoria, but for central Illinois, right. mm -hmm. because our our rental costs will be so competitive that right. you know right. you can't go to Chicago and no. do that. Heck right. no. You know what I mean? So it's so many avenues for opportunity for Peoria with this project, and it's it's something that can grow beyond anything we can imagine. You know, I think. And Lori, this is probably one of the reasons why your group funded this, but one of the things that drives me nuts with mm -hmm. schools and stuff right now is cutting PE and cutting the arts. Mm -hmm. And I know it's, it's all cash. I, I, right. I get that. But at the same time, I truly feel they're the most important things mm -hmm. that are in schools. The PE piece, it's, there's an obesity piece tied to that. Mm -hmm. There's a mental health piece tied to that. Right. But the arts and the creative piece, it's, it's so important to our kids. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you think, about, you think about the best schools in the country. The reason that they're the best is because of the options they provide That's exactly for right. the kids. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. So the best schools in the country, they have art. Mm -hmm. And what a fun way to incorporate all of the STEM topics yeah. anyway. You know, he's talking about helping kids build a set. Yeah. You think you can Starting build anything to. without knowing math? Yeah. Well, you know, measurements and technology. I mean, this is right. a world of technology. I mean, I just think it's a really great, you well, know, incubator for I think too is a lot of the women that are part of your group that you know, River City Construction is an example. Mm -hmm. Leanne mm -hmm. Skews is one. She is a female CEO. Right. She's a boss. Mm -hmm. And yeah. what you're talking about in building 100%. Is trades absolutely one hundred percent right? And so yeah. mm -hmm. there's a gap in yeah. in people wanting to get into the trades business, just like mm -hmm. there is in just about sure. every business right mm -hmm. now. So I think that right. that piece hit me right there, thinking mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. there you what you're doing is the talent that you have, and you think it's not a big deal, but when you can do everything you do to prep a building mm -hmm. and to get it going, I can't even change a light bulb. Right. <laughs> so, but it, but right. what you're doing, if you teach these kids to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, at Children's yeah, Home we had a kid, I, I'll never forget, he, he went to, there was someone in town that mentored this kid and he taught him uh, roofing. Right. And then he got a job at one of the bigger places here in town. It's life changing. It's life changing. It's life changing. And then, you know, <clears throat> aside from the skills that these kids will learn through this process, a child that is a part of a production that they can then see themselves in on a screen, whether it's YouTube, internet, Facebook, that they can share with their friends and their mothers and their family. Can you imagine how much confidence that will inject in them? Mm. Not only that, think about this. <clears throat> All of our kids are doing too much of this anyway. Yeah. <clears throat> Just mm -hmm. think if you, they're not gonna stop doing that. Right, 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 right. right. But if they do it and they say, Mom, check this out. Right. Or Grandma, check this out. Right. You know. Right. <clears throat> Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and, and the thing about what Lori has done with Impact, what Nikki and I have done with Art Inc., what we're getting ready to do with the production studio, guess what? All of those things that I just mentioned, you have to apply the same process. Yeah. The, the thing changes, but the process stays the same. And if we can start teaching the process of how to make something happen, it's transferable to no matter what they do. Yeah. Because the process is the same. Like, there's no difference when I sit at a canvas and began a painting than when I bought this empty building and had to transform it into what I consider one of my greatest pieces of art. Mm. That is a That's great cool. way of putting it. Mm. Interesting. <clears throat> well, what you and Nikki are doing is really phenomenal. I mean, it is. And it you. impacts the kids. I like the, the best part of this talk today mm -hmm. for me was 
the kid needed you, which yeah. means kids need you. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I know that feeling. Yeah. And it hurts when you can't someone stops by your office and you say you have a meeting. Right. Yeah. It's stupid, actually, it, it, if it, you think about it. Yeah, I get it. And, you know, and unfortunately, you can't save everybody. Mm -hmm. But, you know, b before we close, I would like to, to talk about another element of impact that I think is extremely important. I don't have time. Oh, OK. <laughs> but I appreciate it. That's so okay. keep going. You and mm -hmm. Nick, you're doing a great job. Art, Inc. Lori, thank you for everything you. that you and Thanks all the women uh, are doing. It's just been uh, an awesome experience, and I love it. Mm -hmm. Uh, thanks for coming on. Thank I'm you. Matt George, and this is another episode of Business Forward. Thanks for tuning in to Business Forward, brought to you by PNC. PNC Bank, National Association, member FDIC.